Please. Are you working incredibly hard? Bring back Harry, please, sir. Please, please. Can you bring him back, sir? Who? Harry, your son. Thank you, sir. Recently, when King Charles paid a visit to the University of East London Stratford campus, a student asked Charles whether he could bring back Harry. Charles simply said, who? When the student clarified the question and made clear he meant his son Harry, the monarch began to laugh. There have been briefings and leakings and planting of stories against me and my wife. Looks like Prince Harry has finally stepped up to confront the royal family for their condescending behavior towards him. In an unprecedented move, Prince Harry takes a stand against King Charles' public ridicule. Well, the retaliation sparked when King Charles pretended to forget his own son while interacting with the public. Is it the abandonment of the estranged son or straight out disowning? Is Spear the final nail in the coffin for the royal family? Stay tuned to find out. Recently, King Charles, the monarch of the British Empire, had a slight slip up on a public tour. While he was interacting with a crowd during his visit to the University of East London this week, a royal fan requested the monarch to bring back Prince Harry. But the monarch literally just ignored the fan's pleas and proceeded to leave the request unanswered, but the persistent fan, as you saw in the clip, repeated the request again and again till the monarch was compelled to answer. Morning, sir. Morning. So are you all working incredibly hard? Bring back Harry, please, sir. Please, please. Can you bring him back, sir? Who? Harry, your son. Aren't you, sir? The king's ignorant laugh at the question has birthed various controversies regarding the royal family's relationship with the estranged prince. Some wild gossip is also surrounding the media regarding the attendance of the prince and his wife at the upcoming coronation, as you might already know. But this public humiliation has not gone unnoticed by Prince Harry. In an interview with Anderson Cooper in 60 Minutes, Prince Harry told how the British royal family would water conspiracies about him and his wife while seemingly not commenting on the situation. They will feed or have a conversation with the correspondent and that correspondent will literally be spoon-fed information and write the story and then at the bottom of it they will say that they've reached out to Buckingham Palace for comment but the whole story is Buckingham Palace commenting. He further went on to reveal that the royal palace created the conspiracies and did not issue any comment to protect the Sussex from damage. Simply put, they silently betrayed him. He further goes on to say, so when we're being told for the last six years, we can't put a statement out to protect you, but you do it for other members of the family. It becomes, there becomes a point when silence is betrayal. As you might have observed in recent years, the controversies regarding the marriage and other issues that were faced by the couple were not directly addressed by Buckingham Palace. But while working with the big players, the correspondents did play their roles perfectly. Let's listen to such a correspondent. Senior members of the royal family are bound by certain rules that prevent them from acknowledging attacks like this. Only on very, very rare occasions will the palace comment on allegations, accusations, rumors, and so on. And even when they do comment, it is a very short one-line response. However, fans came up with different reactions to the king's response that you surely don't want to miss. Seeing the slip up by the monarch at this prime time is rather hilarious to one particular fan, who tweeted, and he laughed. We all feel that way. Despite the hilarity of the situation, the public stands with Prince Harry. Harry is quite happy living his best life in Montecito. Thank you very much. King Charles also did not get away without some critic remarks. Abusive, hateful, wickedly, cruelty. Prince Charles was Harry's father, employer, and dependent. Charles failed Harry as a father, guardian, and now is hashtag King Charles. Others were quite amused by King Charles' savagery. King Charles is savage, but that is not all. There is much more wild gossip floating around social media that the prince would be disowned. Judging from the reactions of the monarch, a rather insightful fan tweeted, he had probably disowned him. We know what you might be thinking, even with all the conspiracies and the truth coming to light that destroyed the image of the royal family are true. The disownment of a potential hire is rather a harsh conclusion. Well, things are not as simple as they look, especially after the publication of the blockbuster memoir Spare by Prince Harry. Prince Harry is spilling the tea. Woo! He sold over 1.4 million copies of his book, The Spare, the first day, which is unheard of. The controversial part includes a detailed account of his thorny relationship with his father, King Charles. He explained the name of the book like this, describing the incident he was told as a joke. Charles allegedly said to Diana the day he was born, 
Wonderful. Now you've given me an heir and a spare. My work is done. At another instance in the book, the Duke wrote, I was brought into the world in case something happened to Willie. He writes bluntly, I was summoned to provide backup, distraction, diversion, and, if necessary, a spare part. Kidney, perhaps. Blood transfusion. Speck of bone marrow. The feelings of the author are also summarized in his own words. Let's listen as he said, The heir and the spare, there was no judgment about it, but also no ambiguity. I was the shadow, the support, the plan B. I was brought into the world in case something happened to Willie. I was summoned to provide backup, distraction, diversion, and, if necessary, a spare pot. The fans are applauding the courage of the prince and are very glad that they got to hear his story. I've been reading the book and I am really enjoying it. I am glad that Harry is telling his side of the story. This is probably very cathartic for him, but also hope that the family can find a way to repair whatever issues they have. Some even claim that the prince has Princess Diana's spirit. To everyone talking bad about them, read the book first, and to all the hypocrites who say they don't care, you know you're the first to get it. So, please, he has his mother's spirit and chutzpah and I applaud him for having the courage to speak. No matter how supportive the public is, the royal experts have their own take on Prince Harry's book. Jobson, author of Prince Philip's Century, stressed that he admires what Harry has done to raise awareness about the issue of mental health. But he doesn't understand how Harry, who is about to be a father for a second time, continually criticizes his father, especially so soon after his grandfather's passing. He said, there's a bit of disrespect regarding his grandfather, which hasn't gone unnoticed on this side of the pond. To continually blame your childhood, which is of course what we all do, but do you have to air it in public? Most people go see a shrink and it's between them and the shrink, not between them and 50 million people. Another royal expert of Fua Hagen shared his thoughts in an interview with Express UK about Prince Harry saying that the ball lies in their court when asked if he wants to fix the royal rift, implying that he expects an apology. Hagen said, Harry certainly wants an apology from the royal family for the planting of the stories especially, for not defending him and Meghan, for not really being there for them in the way that they needed them. Not only that, the most brutal reaction to the book was by Paul Birrell, who is very close to the Duke's mother and has always protected him. Harry comes from a very different place. He comes from a very privileged world. And he's forgotten the words loyalty, duty, respect to his country to the people of our country and to his family. Well, the expert reviews and public opinion reflect that the environment is very tense. Not only that, the whole world's eyes are also on the royal family now. But still, there is a big question that has kept everybody wondering, will the royal family ever bridge the distance or would they be estranged forever? To give some insight on the situation, former Sun Royal editor Duncan Larkum came forward with his thoughts as he says, He is stepping outside of that sacred, inner circle and breaking the confidence in a way that had it been any friend or former uh, work associate within the royal family they would be blackballed for life so if nothing if harry achieves nothing else from this book he will get himself completely cut out of the royal fold forever he then explicitly states that these are not the actions of a family member who is getting his anger out and soon will make up the circumstantial evidence proves that Prince Harry is shredding any chances of reconciliation by releasing the memoir. In his opinion, the royal family will never forgive this. Amid these controversies, there is a big question that has not been answered yet, and that is whether the Duke and Duchess of Sussex would be invited to the coronation. Charles III's coronation will take place on May 6, and according to sources, so far there are no suggestions inside Buckingham that the Duke and Duchess will be excluded from the three-day event. So far what is known about the ceremony is that the service will be held at Westminster Abbey and that it will last 90 minutes, and the invitations will be sent out during February. Harry and Meghan are on the list, which will include 2,000 people including royals, special guests, and world leaders. One of the planners told that the Sussexes are expected in the UK almost a week in advance saying, they will certainly be invited and we are working on the assumption that they will come. It would be helpful if they arrived earlier so it wouldn't be a total circus on the day. Whether the Sussexes decide to come to the coronation ceremony or not, the royal experts claim that they would not be welcomed at all. About this, GB News host Nigel Farage says, they will not be welcomed at what is meant to be one of the most amazing moments of national celebration for 70 years. The thought of those two coming along, taking part in it, and then selling their stories, well they have shown already they are beneath contempt. That's it for today folks. Until next time, goodbye.